Welcome to Fight Factory Pro Wrestling, Ireland's longest running wrestling school, soon to be celebrating its 16th year in operation. Today, Colin and Mark from the Irish Wrestling Entertainment team are very fortunate to be on site while the latest group of trainees prepare for their next gen showcase, a unique opportunity for them to gain valuable experience of what it takes to become a professional wrestler. To give a little more insight into what the next gen venture is all about, is wrestling royalty and co-owner of Fight Factory Pro Wrestling, Katie Harvey. I'm joined today by Fight Factory co-owner and head coach, Katie Harvey. Katie, we're down here at the Next Gen project here today. Can you tell us a bit about it? So Next Gen is basically our, um, it's for trainees. Basically, it's for people who are looking to get started on shows. Um, it's kind of like low stress reps, um, if that makes sense. Um, Ireland has quite a good problem in the fact that a lot of the shows from a lot of companies are very high standard, but it means that there's nowhere for people to kind of get their first one to 10 reps and make their mistakes and you know figure stuff out before they present themselves to the world. So Next Gen is designed as a stopgap. Um, we don't film these shows, we don't put them online. We want wrestlers to be able to just go out, have a match, and then use that as a, as a training tool to improve themselves. Um, we invite people from all over the country um, because, again, it's great to get a connection with people from other schools. Um, and we've had people travel from abroad for these next gen days as well um, because you're not always going to wrestle the people that you train with week in and week out. You need to be able to arrive on a show and adapt to anyone you're wrestling, basically. So next gen is really good for developing that side of a wrestler as well. Um, so what we do is we just get a lot of people on the mats. I think we've got 40 on the mats today. We've got eight coaches on hand. We have a big focus today on chain wrestling, which is one of the things I'd say Fight Factory is famous for. <laughs> um, but we have a very, very good level of technical wrestling that comes out of this school. Um, so that was today's big focus. Folks, what is it again? There's more time for people to do before you try it. When you spin around, sort of catch it, over catch it, want to hook in, over hook in there, yeah? Nice and high around the tricep. Lee already knows he has a hand on the back. So he's into what we do with it. Blessed with one of the strongest, most experienced coaching teams in Europe, the future of Irish professional wrestling is in excellent hands. Coaching is thorough, detailed and provided in a fun, enjoyable environment. Above all else, safety is paramount. So uh, I'm Colm, I'm 16, I'm from Tala in Dublin. I have been training with Fight Factory since October last year where I did their 10 week beginners course. Getting the chance to come down to these next gen days is really fantastic because there's people here from Cork, people here from Belfast, people here from all around the country who I only see and get an opportunity to train with every three or four months of these next gen shows. So really it's not about the wrestling for me yet as I'm still in school and I need to focus on that. But it's more about coming down, meeting new people, getting getting new friends, and getting an opportunity to work with some of the best wrestlers in the country. What separates Five Factory to you in days like today or the Next Gen Project from other schools around the country, and what have you taken from it? Uh, well, the main reason I joined Five Factory is they have a dedicated beginners program. It runs ten weeks. They run five or six a year uh, at FFPW Ireland on Twitter. If you want to sign up for them. Um, the thing that makes Fight Factory different for me is the crew. The team of coaches and the wrestlers here are always so, so nice and kind. And especially for me because I'm 16 and I'm not fully developed and I struggle a lot with uh, the strength aspect of wrestling. They'll always take their time with me and they'll work out other ways maybe that I can work moves into my moveset. 
so that it doesn't hurt anybody else and I don't end up hurting myself. So again, once we're here, spin, put myself into my hammer lock. From here, my right, comes in the scarf here, the break. Come up, around, throw it down, and take one to the headlock. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Nice. Each coach brings something different to the table, whether it's a technical approach, in-ring awareness, or character development. Every trainee enjoys a well-rounded experience of what it takes to become a professional wrestler. Speaking of characters, one of the most entertaining and beloved members of the Irish wrestling scene is here to tell us a little more. Justy, can you give us a bit, of, a bit about your own background, where you are, and a bit about the Next Gen Showcase that's on today? Um, yeah, my background, I, it's a window, and there's a ring in the background, a few wrestlers there as well. No, I, I started wrestling, um, I started backyarding probably in the 90s, yeah, it was like 98, 99, and I found out about uh, a school, NWA Ireland, in Bray, um, and I think I went there first in 2000, late 2002, um, and would have been a regular there from 2003 onwards. And that's the school that ended up being the Fight Factory and has produced, you know, uh, Finn Balor started it. They produced the, the likes of all the Irish wrestling stars that you see now. Um, you know, uh, Becky Lynch would have started there, Ethan Valkyrie, uh, JD McDonough. So, yeah, so we've got a good lineage here in the, the Fight Factory. And I was privileged to bump for every one of them. Brilliant. And I suppose we're here today at the Next Gen Showcase. Can you give us a bit of information about what that's about and what the goals for the future be for these kind of uh, next wave of talent coming through? Yeah, like the, the Next Gen Showcase is actually one of my favourite uh, times of the month because you get to have a little bit more fun in a kind of a relaxed show, but getting people with less experience um, out there, getting reps, getting them in front of an audience and getting them used to actually wrestling a live show. Uh, so they're not just on the mats every week, uh, three, four days a week and grinding with seeing no results for like, you know, years down the line when they finally become good enough for bookers to, to have a look at them. Um, they need to get some reps in front of live audience and that's what the Next Gen Showcase is all about. And it's just kind of a, a more relaxed show, fun, and you don't put too much pressure on the, the wrestlers. Um, right now, I think uh, as... It's my responsibility and uh, some of the older guard, our responsibility to uh, keep the new generation uh, active and excited about wrestling and give them reasons to want to keep training and want to push harder and to continue that legacy in the Fight Factory. And that's what Next Gen is all about. It's about bringing the next generation um, and working them, molding them into people who will get onto main shows and then other shows and getting them used to actually wrestling a live show. Uh, so they're not just on the mats every week, uh, three, four days a week, and grinding with seeing no results for like, you know, years down the line when they finally become good enough for bookers to, to have a look at them. And um, they need to get some reps in front of live audience. And that's what the Next Gen Showcase is all about. And it's just kind of a, a more relaxed show, fun, and you don't put too much pressure on the, the wrestlers. Um, right now, I think uh, as it's my responsibility and uh, some of the older guard, our responsibility to uh, keep the new generation uh, active and excited about wrestling and give them reasons to want to keep training and want to push harder and to continue that legacy in the Fight Factory. And that's what Next Gen is all about. It's about bringing the next generation um, and working them, molding them into people who will get onto main shows and then other shows and beyond and hopefully one day become uh, like household names in professional wrestling. And can you touch on the, the environment you and the coaching staff here have created for um, would-be wrestlers, people are looking to do this for fun and what your friends like yourself and other skills as well? Um, yeah, like I, I always like to think that um, Fight Factory has a very welcoming and a very uh, kind of communal uh, vibe going to it like so it's 
it is competitive. Like everybody has to look left and right and see that the people that are beside them are their competitors for spots on shows, but also they have to look and see that those people are the people that have the same interests. They're on the same mats. They're going through the same journey. So it's kind of um, like a little family, like a, we, a proper little community here that we try and build and we try and be as welcoming as possible. We've got um, all kinds of uh, wrestling training so that everybody feels comfortable from beginner to advanced to everyone in between. Um, there's also uh, the squad training, which will uh, cater towards um, females and uh, women and people who are uh, non-binary and it's just kind of a safe space for people to come into. Um, so at the Fight Factory, I think we try and make it as um, you know, inclusive as possible for everybody at, at every level. We don't want anyone to walk in to the doors and be intimidated by professional wrestling or by any professional wrestling in here. So I think, um, I'm not, I won't say that that differentiates us from any wrestling school. I think uh, that a lot of schools will have a, a mentality where people get very clicky and they will become like a family and they will become friends. But I think uh, what Fight Factory offers to people is that when you walk through that door at the very beginning, um, of your journey that there is a bunch of friendly faces there that are willing to help you along your journey and they're not no one is expecting or wanting anyone to fail they want everybody walks through that door to have a good time and to succeed in professional wrestling hey before you go so you can replace it with something you are comfortable with yeah i hit martin hip toss martin's face to the corner i want everyone to give it a bit of like all right your big baby face here when you hit the hip toss I don't know, whatever it is you want to do, there's people here to react off, you give it a bit, come on. If you have a, a taunt, do your taunt, right, is essentially what I mean here. Um, one thing to avoid, because it's a big habit that people get a lot, is avoid hitting the hip toss and being like, oh, 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 and then having to like go all the way back over. Like, to me, like it really kills it. Or like, if you feel that like, oh, I'm a bit, oh, I'm, a, I'm a bit, I don't, sometimes that feels, uh, to me that feels awkward that oh, I have to walk over just to whip them. But something I said at the other group that particularly I think like Finn Balor is on Rayla when he notices he's like far away he'll like line up and like hit them or something yeah because it looks like I'm going in with intent there and then I'm whipping them rather than again they're like yeah <sighs> walk 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 and then just to whip them right we're gonna go whip I'm gonna open over here whip switch I'm gonna open over as I land Marion's gonna give me his back so Ideally, when you're going under, like like eat the buckle or something. Like Marin should to take something. So he feeds his back out to me. I'm gonna roll him up. One, two. As he kicks, he's feeding his left arm into me. I'm gonna catch it. Turn, 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 and flip him. Marin's gonna take a big flip one and separate. Nice. Oh. Oh. Go on, Norm. One, two. Nice. Good stuff. Um, well, I'm Tony, and I've been training about a year and a half now, I think. So today has been my fourth next gen training session and hopefully show, but today it's been like a very chill vibe. There's been three sections focusing on moves, on chain and spots. So like it's been very different from what I'm, I'm used to. And I've been able to work with girls, but I'm, I'm not used to because there's so little girls. It's like, thankfully in Fight Factory we have the squad, which is literally just girls and a few young kids. And it's like, the mo it's really, most girls feel the most comfortable, I, I think, because you get to walk with girls your height, uh, try moves that you wouldn't be able to do on your fits, as like the weight difference and like the height differences be too hard to do. So like it's been, today especially been just like very good vibes and like good energy and like there's no one like trying to politic. It was like oh I don't want to win that match. 
I am getting that match as well. It's just been very good vibes so far. Good. How have you found coaching in comparison to other situations or other schools you may have uh, been in? And how has that helped you in your own progression? And how has that lent towards your own goals for the future? I think here in Fight Hockey, the coaches are a lot more chill and they understand, like, oh, if they want to do it as a hobby, they can do it as a hobby. Oh, if they want to be that's the main, the main event, we can get them there compared to other skills, like, where they're like, more like, angry and like, aggressive. Not aggressive, but like, they're not as coach slow. So, like, over here, it's just like, oh, we're going to teach you how to wrestle no matter why you want to wrestle. And I, I think that really helps in mental health and like, helps you like, relax a bit and be more comfortable and not be scared to go wrestling. For the rest of 2023 and 2024, what would your own individual aspirations be wrestling wise and hope, where do you hope to end up? I'd love to end up like on a main show, wrestling either David Patel or Anita Vaughn at the moment. I think that's just my main goal at the moment. Or getting onto other shows around Ireland, because the there's not enough women. Once again, as I mentioned before, it's not enough women. So, like, getting more women to debut and getting them on shows, we can show like. This country has good wrestling women, we just don't have enough, and hopefully, we won't see women wrestling uh, come in. A number of trainees are quite new to the wrestling scene, but you may have noticed some familiar faces, which is encouraging to see. You are never too long in the game to expand your knowledge base. If you are not learning, you are not moving forward. If you are not moving, you are standing still. Next Gen is not only for those starting out, it is a crucial resource to those fine-tuning their skills and honing their craft. So my name is Jay Steins. I started from Fight Factory in January 2016 in Bray. I've been here ever since. Uh, when we first moved to Dublin, we had to get used to new surroundings. And we obviously had a lot more people come in. Uh, we lost some people, unfortunately. But this place has always been like a second home to me, if that makes sense. Uh, I'm here all the time, training, working, uh, doing everything. and. I don't know where it'd be without Fight Factory. Brilliant. And how, how have you found the coaches today uh, accommodating so many people for this Next Gen Showcase coming from all over the country, people with so many different backgrounds? How have you found coaching from your own experience over the last number of years and particularly for today for so many new people to Fight Factory itself? It's been amazing because, you know, Fight Factory is really highly regarded all around, all around Europe and the world. Uh, because of all the names we've had come out of this place, people, people like Finn Balor, Becky Lynch, the things they taught my coaches have been uh, brought down to the likes of me and Eld guy and stuff. So it's really, it's a really humbling experience, I guess, to learn from. I think some of the greatest coaches in Europe. One group working on the spot in the ring. We'll do twenty minutes and then we'll rotate through, okay? Uh, just stay, start in the group that you were in anyway. So if you were doing this little section, stay here. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What? Mm -hmm. What? Mm -hmm. what? Mm -hmm. what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay, uh, why am I the Okay, look, is it going to work with your pairs? I'm just going to demo something again. We'll just so what we're going to focus on is test the strength stuff. Okay? So we're very lucky at Fight Factory that we have a really excellent coaching team. Um, we kind of encompass a lot of different strengths. Um, Fight Factory, even though I'm kind of become the face of the figurehead and I do make a lot of the final decisions, it is pretty much ran by committee. Um, and most of them are our coaches. You'll see them here today. We've got LJ, Martin Steers, Debbie Keitel, Phil and Justy. We've got the Saviors. We've got JB. Um, and all of us bring different strengths um, because my day job is I train trainers and I'm a gym manager on the outside. So I apply a lot of them skills to how I run Fight Factory. Um, so, for example, there's some coaches who are better at technical wrestling. There's some people who are better at coaching character, promos, branding. What we do is we lean into the coach's strengths to make sure people are getting the most well-rounded approach to training and also different comfort levels. 
um, even how we approach people in our training can be different as it varies coach to coach and that's really really important in any sport and um, so I am I'm quite empathetic so I, I I'd be a coach who kind of really checks in with people's feelings while they're training other coaches would be very technical like move your left toe 90 degrees <laughs> you need both for a successful training school not just in wrestling in sports in general um, so that, that's kind of what I've taken from my day job into here and kind of why I have this coaching staff um, and, and, and this group of people basically running Fight Factory. We are the longest running wrestling school in Ireland. We are one of the longest running in Europe and our profile, like it makes me so happy because our guys will go train other places and then their coaches will get in touch to be like brilliant. Like uh, a lot of the guys train in Chavo Guerrero school. Uh, when they were in the US recently and he sent compliments back to the coaches of Fight Factory and stuff like that is just incredible. When we have people like Jonathan Gresham on the mats and they're like, I have to change my training plan because you guys are ahead of where I thought you would be. And um, all of that is just a testament to the group of people we have here training and the kind of training we get from Fight Factory. Um, like in the 15 years, we've had so many people go for tryouts, wrestle in Japan, we've got Eva Valkyrie on WrestleMania weekend. Um, and that's what we're doing. Our approach is we'll show you how to wrestle, we'll show you how to brand yourself, we'll give you the opportunities we can, and then fly away and just don't forget us. <laughs> uh, so we're 15 years strong. We're going to celebrate our 16th year anniversary in August. And honestly, with the, with the structures we have in place, I'm really looking forward to celebrating 20 years, 30 years, and beyond with Fight Factory. Who's the best coach? me <laughs> i would look i will answer this seriously and um, we have a lot of excellent coaches but i think phil is and i'm not just saying it because he's my fiance is one of the most underrated wrestling coaches in europe when you see the roster of people he has trained you know or had a hand in training literally a who's who of irish wrestling he has had a hand in training and across all promotions and across all schools and um, very very underrated vast amounts of knowledge and um, he just does not boast <laughs> he's very very modest so i do always encourage people to get down to phil's training sessions because everyone always walks away with something the vibe during training is very positive the coaches are fully invested and the engagement level is high trainees are treated as adults respected as individuals and openly encouraged to ask questions it is clear to see that these sessions are an essential part of their physical, mental and emotional well-being, all of which contribute greatly to their own personal development. The purpose of today is just to um, bring all the skills together. Uh, Next Gen is an important project that we do here because old lads like me are not going to hang around forever, even though I'm going to try my best. Uh, but it's very important that we're developing the next level of, of talent come through the school. Um, we can't be reliant on the people who are on the shows and the only way we can do that is to give these people platforms. So that's why we try to bring, we invite open doors for our school, not that they're not open any other day, but we open them up to get everyone together, training, learning different styles, learning each other and making connections so basically the guys can have more opportunity to get, to get their names out there and get those reps in. That's brilliant. Um, we've been here for the day, obviously we got to see a bit of training earlier. Um, very good vibe out there. Very good atmosphere that was created. Is that a conscious decision by yourself and the other coaches to create that welcome and warm atmosphere? For yeah, look, it? look, it's not fake. That's the one thing I'd say. It's hundred percent not fake, and I'd never like, try and tell you that it was. Or like, my whole thing is that we've from from day one, a, a long, long time ago in Brave, we made a conscious decision to take bad attitudes and get them out. Of, not get them out, but to let them know that bad attitudes are not welcome in this club, um, and. That what's that? What that's done is basically manifested a, a, a very friendly, uh, training environment, and um, which is which is something I'm very proud of. Like uh, that hasn't happened overnight. That's been a lot of like tough decisions at times, and and but making sure that people are coming in with the right attitudes because there's nothing worse than going to a training school that has a bad attitude. Because what happens is poor guys who just just sign up because they want to become wrestlers find a different school, go in realize there's a bad attitude there, and then they subconsciously develop bad attitudes um, it's very much like monkey say monkey do and the good thing is that we do make a conscious decision decision here to make sure that it is a positive atmosphere people at the end of the day we're all just wrestling fans but you've been doing it 20 years you've been doing it 20 days so it's important that people are fair 
when we talk about things like um like our squad training uh once a month like these are all these are all inclusion uh projects that we do to make sure that everyone feels welcome that you know there's not this that no one feels intimidated in any sort of way because at the end of the day it's a, it's a very intimidating place to come um and to join up with any new sports club so we, we definitely make a conscious effort of of making sure things are positive don't get me wrong constructive criticism happens at times but generally it's it's positive like no one no one gets no one gets no one gets given out there for giving things a go if that makes sense yeah absolutely um we got to see a bit of training today although like there was a very good vibe when you're on the mats you're doing things very seriously the coaches are there giving great guidance i think they're very warm they're very open and um, there's nothing forced either it's like are you comfortable doing this is that kind of thing um t- can you talk a bit about the coaches that you have out there who you have and like just what they offer to to a, a club or a school like this no no one on those matches coaching that hasn't came through my my co- coaching criteria it's very the for, my most important rule is it's always been safety first never never ask one anyone to try anything that they're uncomfortable with. even if you don't think it's dangerous other people can't can't process that in their brains it is a very dangerous sport particularly if you're unsure or unconfident about what you're doing and all those trainers lee even started out with they were all spoon fed information allowed to take smaller sessions we, we made sure that everything is perfect no one's allowed to coach it down the, down those mats without having a full understanding of the risks that involved so at the end of the day there's nothing that i fear most in this world it's not my injury i, I could get injured tomorrow i accept that it's to see other people getting injured under my watch and in fairness we have such a great great track record i have to touch one god bless but like we have such a good track record there of not having the best thing about it is i've that all the stuff i've learned i've passed on to katie harvey katie harvey's passed it on to lee lee has passed it on to martin martin uh, and KD and justy and everyone and it's a whole learning curve in fairness and the one thing i'll say is that even when those guys go learn in different training schools when they go to england and they go to europe and stuff like that it's brilliant because they bring back stuff that i haven't seen before and then that just makes me a better coach so we are we have a we have a really good strong learning dynamic here of like i believe you don't know everything and you're constantly able to learn um i learned something off justy today as you know Kong, about about promos um so like yeah it's a constant learning curve and like everyone is held to these high standards and when we talk about codes of conduct and stuff like that these aren't just phrases that we throw out like we have a code of conduct we have we have meetings here between the between the coaches to make sure that we're we're going in the same direction that we're teaching the same sort of stuff and and we try to stay on the same page as much as much as possible Considering that some of the most successful professional wrestlers have graced the doors of Fight Factory Pro Wrestling, the school's reputation precedes itself. Next Gen Day is held in Dublin. However, this has not deterred trainees from travelling from every corner of Ireland and across Europe to take part. Mike, thanks for joining us. Um, how are you found today? Give us a bit more background about yourself and your own wrestling experience. Uh... I must be wrestling nearly about over just coming up to two years now. I made my debut match roughly just over one year ago as well. As many matches and get myself seen by anyone as uh, possible. So, um, I I train I was training about four four or five nights a week. So any opportunity I can to go and do a bit, I. I jump at that a lot on the mic, so. Brilliant. And how have you found today so far with the, the training this morning? People with all different backgrounds, people coming from the north, people coming from Cork and Limerick, and obviously the, the regular trainees here in Fight Factory. And how have you found the coaches? Are they encouraging? What's the kind of atmosphere you found? Yeah, fantastic. Um, I learned so much already here today. Stuff I hadn't a clue about. So it was all new stuff for me today. So I found, found, it, found it tough, but... I feel like I'm I'm actually leaving here with more knowledge and more things as well, so very happy to be today. <laughs> Here we 
Big Kota. Big Leap. Oh! Yeah, yeah, you got it, you got it. Don't worry. One, two. Very good. Really good. Good stuff. So we have basically every school in Ireland covered, I think, over these next gen days, um, which is brilliant. There's not a lot of shows on at the moment where you're actually getting a flavour of everything. Um, so that's what next gen is brilliant for. We also have people from our squad, squad training. So once a month, we run a training specifically for women, trans and non-binary people. And it's kind of a safer space to get into the art of pro wrestling. Uh, so it's still quite a boys club in a lot of ways. So this is just another gateway because we believe that wrestling should be for everyone. Um, the only group we don't have represented today that we work with is our uh, adults with intellectual disabilities. We run a, a class once a week with uh, a group of adults, um, but they're gonna have their own special showcase in a couple of weeks. Um, so we just try to get everyone, everyone down, everyone wrestling together, everyone mingling, because that is the only way to push an entire scene forwards. If you're a current trainee and you're on the fence about whether to come down to one of these next gen showcases or if you are um, a prospective trainee and you're worrying about where should I go to start my wrestling career or journey, what would advice would you give them and what would you say to them in terms of if they want to come down here to Fight Factory? The biggest step that you can make on your wrestling journey is the first step. So I would say walk through the door. Um, so many people have been daunted by professional wrestling for so many years. And I remember when, when I was starting out, there was a kind of a mentality of, um, like, if you're, not, if you're not going hard, go home. And, you know, drive, 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 drive. And we were, like, trying to weed out the weaker people because you only wanted the best. And I think that kind of mentality um, doesn't belong in wrestling anymore because, like, there's so many different aspects of professional wrestling that, not you can't see someone on day one and say that they they're going to make it as a professional wrestler like you could see in a few months time and you go oh they they're bringing something to the table that i never would have thought like they've got more charisma or oh my god like they're actually way more athletic than they actually thought because they were too nervous when they came in first so i think now uh, you want to kind of create an atmosphere that isn't daunting to someone walking in and that is more inclusive. So I think like to someone who is um, on the fence about coming to be like trying to be a professional wrestler, I would say that just walk through the door because it's not as scary as you think it's going to be. And you will find that the environment that you're getting yourself into is actually a really fun environment. And uh, it's not, it's hard work to be a professional wrestler, but when you're with people who have the same mindset, and are at the same ability as you, you will have fun while you're doing it. So that won't seem like hard work because you will be enjoying every second of it.
If you're a new start or a current trainee and you're considering coming down to Toy Factory to one of these new next gen showcases or even training during the week, what advice would you give them and what would they be in line to expect if they came down here? Just go over it, try it, and because I promise you won't look back. Uh, the second you walk in here, you won't want to leave. That's how I felt anyway. Um, it really is like a second home and everyone feels welcome here. We're around our best mates and there's no place like that. The best thing to do is get out of your comfort zone because once you get out of that comfort zone, like there's like so much on the other side of that. So just brave it out, come up. If you really, really want to do it, you come and do it. And I promise you that that will be the best decision you'll make. Like, so if you're coming down here to Fight Factory, shake hands, introduce yourself to new people. You'll get connections. You'll meet these people outside of wrestling. You'll meet them anywhere. People you meet in Fight Factory will help you with life in general because everyone here is much older than me. They've got a lot more experience in wrestling and with life. And when I go to them for advice about anything, they give me very valuable tips that have helped me in a lot of ways. Have fun. Let loose. Just don't be scared. Let, let loose. Have fun. Yeah, like, like I said, the, the hardest step is the first one. Um, we get a lot of messages saying, like, what can I do to prepare for this? And, and in fairness, there's not really a lot you can do. This is not a sport that you can just go run on a pitch or run on a treadmill. It will improve your general fitness, but getting into the ring and physically doing these things is, is, is something that you need to just take that, take that step, take that jump. And the thing is, like, a lot of this stuff, a lot of this stuff you, you, you won't pick up quickly. It's difficult. Like I, I find it very easy now, but if I'm 20 years into it, and I definitely didn't find it easy for the first five years. I was one of the last in my group to get a match on a show, and, and there's people who've been here on the roster who've been main guys on our roster now, and I won't name names, but a certain individual was about six years here without even con being considered for a match. It, he, he was that much of a late bloomer. And now, now that he's bloomed, he's one of the top guys on our card at the moment. Um, but what I'd say is, like, you just have to kind of take the push. And what I'd say is come in with no expectation to yourself. Um, things will happen in their own due course. The, the main thing we talk about is just repetition. You've just got to con consistently give it your best effort. And if your best isn't that good enough that day, that's fine. No one holds anyone to any high, high standards here. Like, if you, if you, if you try something and mess up, like that's fine there's no there's no con condemning or anything like that but the important thing is is that it's all trial and error and that's my best advice to anyone starting out it's trial and error but if you don't trial it like you'll never make those errors and you'll never you'll never see it the first step i'd say is just get yourself down come down with no expectations and just just give it your best effort <laughs> Nice. Oh. 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 Nice. Right. One, two. You're catching that arm. Nice. Good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah, yeah. Just. I think I said it to you before just because, like, with your size and stuff, and like, because coming from me, who like I like was very similar. We're, we're similar, like yeah, I'm mad. <laughs> we're we're even similar height up. Like I was similar size. When you're taking a tackle, really attack him as well. And see when you do, if you do like a splash in the corner, just fucking mill him with it. But you can get away with it because you're smaller. I mean, you need, like just mill people safely. Obviously, you know you're not you're not hitting them here. But I mean, like I'm, I'm gonna hit you. I mean, fucking home, you know, cross the chest and all safe. And then for that last bit, you knew when you when you're coming up. After the schoolboy, before the flipping, yeah. you're in control. So maybe they're trying not to be like over here. He he'll give you a feeder, and you should be like again. You're tactically, you know what you're about to go for. So look more like in control. Really good though. All right, next in. Fight Factory operates a very busy calendar, from regular next gen showcase days to spectacular monthly events, as well as a regular and robust inclusive training schedule. Regardless of where you are in your wrestling journey, there is a place for everyone at Fight Factory. Well, we have our monthly over 18s bring your own beer shows. At the moment, there are bread and butter. Um, it's something we started up after the pandemic because we felt like there was a hole in Irish wrestling that kind of needed that kind of show again. 
Um, but the other aim with them shows is also to attract non-wrestling fans. Um, so the idea behind them is we keep them two, two and a half hours. They're bring your own beer. Um, we want people to bring their mates who may not have necessarily seen a wrestling show. And that's why I try to put a lot of variety on the show. That's why you'll have a serious main event next to a musical chairs match. <laughs> that's why you will have a bear next to an import from the UK. Um, because I liken it to listening to a music album or going to a concert. You may not like every single song, but it's the overall experience is what catches people. Um, so that's what I like to think of matches in a Fight Factory show is like just different genres of song. But all together, we make up like one solid artist. The Savior Show. I really Sorry, hope that's not what people are going to end up calling it. <laughs> um, no, basically, I'm a big TV nerd. Every episode show just gets named after one of my favorite TV shows. This month is Ted Lasso. It just naturally tied in with the Saviors team. Um, but again, I like to use the, the posters to highlight um, people within Fight Factory because I think if you have an amazing looking graphic that you can put on your socials, again, it's just about branding and it's another way we can help people come up in the school, help themselves stand out um, in, in a sea of, of wrestlers across Europe. So you can see there's obviously a huge unique opportunity today with next gen going on in the background today. When will the next gen show be scheduled? Uh, so at the moment I have them scheduled every three months. Um for me, I don't really want to want to run them that much more often because I want people to be prepared for them. Um and I want to leave a big enough gap that we should be having debuts on every show. So generally people will debut between six months to twelve months of training. It will vary person by person. Um, for example, I debuted within three months of starting training, um, but like I was training five times a week. If someone's training once a week, it might take a little bit longer, um, or just depending what boxes they're ticking um, until they've got kind of the full sheet to have a safe, confident match, they won't be on a next gen. Um, sorry, that was a big tangent now. I've forgotten. <laughs> I've forgotten what I was answering. Oh, what's coming next? So yeah, they won't be ran much more often than three months. Um, but we are going to start looking at branching back into the family-friendly shows that we would have ran in places like the Big Sean pre-pandemic. We're going to look at bringing some of them back. Katie Harvey, thank you very, very much for your time. No problem.